Hi, Renee. Welcome, Renee. Good, good. Perfect. Okay. Hello, hello, Mary. Hello, Angelina. Larissa. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So that's good. We got that part out of the way now. Victoria, welcome. Glad you can make it. So hopefully, hopefully everyone's having a wonderful day. I'm still holding on. Oh, Renee. Oh, thank you. Yes, they are new. Getting really good compliments on them. They got a nice thick frame, which uh, is good for my longer face. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Jordana. Thank you. Hi, Terry. You made it. <laughs> we spoke like five minutes ago. You made it. Awesome. Okay, so we're having a, I'm having, we're having a good day today here. I'm in Canada, Ontario, a little rainy in the morning, but I'm, you know, we still have our nice um, warm weather. I'm hoping it could stay until like October. So <laughs> I'm missing summer already, uh, but hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here today, uh, joining our fall. Where are we from? So Laura is from, and I believe that's Connecticut, if I'm correct. Sometimes I forget the short forms of the states, <laughs> but hopefully I'm correct. So Washington, South Dakota. We also have Renee from uh, Florida. Uh, she's our U.S. sales rep, so she, it's a pleasure always to have her here to help me. Trinidad, welcome, Jennifer. I think we've had you before. Your name sounds very familiar. Waterloo, North Carolina, Denver, San Diego, Kentucky. So I am in Ontario in Canada, if you, if you want to know. Charlotte, North Carolina, Nova Scotia, beautiful, I've been there, Saskatoon. We actually, I don't know, for the person who's from Saskatoon, if you know Rob from Creative Beauty, we actually have him in-house today while he's in the office. So um, sure do. <laughs> yep, good old Rob. Awesome. Okay, so I waited. Martina is from Oregon. Hi, Rob. <laughs> I will make sure to say to give the greetings to Rob. <laughs> He's not in here right now. Actually, it would be cool to use him and uh, tint his brows, right? <laughs> okay, so thank you everybody for letting me know where you're from. I am going to begin today because we are going to be doing a live demonstration. So I quickly just wanted to show a small little presentation, especially for those people that are new to the brand or new to the service of brow lamination. So I'm, I'm just going to attach the uh, presentation, just let me know that you can see it on the screen. Ottawa, Ottawa, I will be there in about two weeks. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys for letting me know. It's you can see it. I tried to make it very fall looking. So uh, as we are approaching fall, perfect. Okay, so just a quick introduction for those because I do see a lot of names of people who have been great support uh, uh, with my webinars. So I'm glad, I'm happy that you're here, but also I might have new ones. If you wanna put it in the chat box and let me know if you're new. Um, someone said they cannot see it. Kelly, but you can hear me and you can see me? You might need to refresh, refresh your screen. So I'm new, new, new. Okay, perfect, Kelly. Okay, so there's a lot of people new here, so you might not know me. So I'm gonna just do a quick introduction. My name is Chrissy, and I am the lead uh, reflective soul trainer for North America. So I do a lot of these uh, trainings. I do a lot of these webinars. Uh, if I'm at the trade show, which unfortunately I couldn't be there at Chicago, so if you were th there, sorry, couldn't make it like for the class. But our our um, sales rep Renee did an amazing job. So I hope you're able to visit the booth. But I will be at trade shows as well uh, to help. Um, I get this uh, brand well known and show demonstration. So that's what I do. I have a real passion for Reflectisol. I love using it. I love teaching it. And I love um, communicating with all the professionals that are using it or want to use it because I like to keep that connection and love to see your work as well as we do feature it on our Instagram account. So don't forget that. I will show a slide at the end that you can uh, see our Instagram accounts and whenever you do take it before and after pictures, anything that has to be Reflectisol, tag it, we'll share it. Okay, so let's start with the fall brow. So we know, you know, in the summer when we had the webinar, we talked about um, how great it is to uh, do the brow lamination, the brow uh, tinting, as well as a lash lift. So the lash tinting, because it's waterproof, you're able to enjoy any summer activities. You don't have to worry about the sweat, you know, um, interfering with that look, and it can last up to um, six weeks. So now we're talking about the fall because 
this these trends of uh, brow tinting, brow lamination, so forth, they are all year round trends. Uh, but thinking about the fall, we get into those more uh, either cooler colors sometimes, but more warmer, Co cooler, warmer. Cooler would be winter, but in the fall, we get more into the warm colors. So it's great to start introducing, you know, usually people change their hair color according to the season. I do that sometimes too. So my hair is actually a little bit more reddish. So when I tint my brows, I want to introduce a little bit more warm colors. So that will help you also to be able to play around with a lot of the Effectisil colors. Okay, so uh, for the new ones, I always put this in as a presentation because you never know um, who might be new. So for you to know about a little bit brief about the Reflexisil brand, they are from Austria, so a European brand, and they are the world leading brand since 1930. They actually this weekend celebrated their 90th year anniversary. So when you think about a company that has withstand such a long time, 90 years, uh, and is the market leader in lashes and brows, uh, when you're comparing and trying to find a brand, this is something that's going to hold a great value of a brand, no matter what the brand is, because it's been around and it uh, has great reputation and doesn't um, uh, lose the interest of your, it doesn't lose, how was I going to say this? The professionals don't lose interest because there's always consistency. Uh, there's always, there's no formulation changes because the product works just fine. But if there needed to be a formulation change, then um, they have their own lab and they can get that done right away. Or if there's anything that we were complaining about and it's like a big complaint because you can hear it from many people, they will be able to fix that right away because they have their own lab. So that's a little bit of a brief little overview about Refectosil. So you are going to be working with a great brand and hopefully after this webinar for the new ones, you will be purchasing some and trying it out. So brows, brows, brows. What's this trend when we talk about brows? Well, whether it be microblading, microfeathering, extensions, or a good old fashioned brow pencil, there are tons of ways to groom your brows. And we see that all over social media. But one service that will be trending this fall, um, because we know that brow lamination has been um, in it started getting really heavy last year. Like we saw it all over social media. Uh, you know, the pictures that were flooding Instagram of uh, brow laminations was in, was intense. But this tr trend is still continuing because as you know, from past uh, webinars, it's, we'd say it's a non-invasive treatment, right? So if somebody is not able to do a uh, microblading or a microfeathering because some of them are semi-permanent tattoos and so forth, they will be able to uh, do this service. It's good on, easy on the pocket as well, uh, as microblading can cost between 500 to 800 um, um, for the service, right? And then you come back to touch it up as well. Uh, so this is why we want to talk about brow lamination because it is well sought out. It's a service that people are seeking out. So if you're not offering this, you'll do a great justice to your, your salon or, or, or if you're working for uh, an owner who has a salon, that knowledge that you have, they will be more happy that you're able to be on par with these new trends. Okay, so the service brow lamination is a good alternative to microblading, as we mentioned, because it works with your existing hair. So it works with your natural hair, uh, giving you the, uh, your ideal brow look without the use of needles, ink insertions into the body and pain. Add on a tint and shape and you will create wow brows. Okay, so they'll see this instant result as soon as they walk out of the, sal uh, the salon or spa. Three looks we're going to talk about uh, that you can achieve with brow lamination. Your first look is your soap brow. And if you've heard my past webinars, uh, soap brow was something that uh, started to get really popular with people using actual bar soap and a spoolie and wetting the spoolie and brushing the bar soap and be uh, able to put it on the brows to hold them into place. Um, when I had tried this, it wasn't good for my stubborn brows. Um, it started to get really not chalky but it left some residue it also can dry out your skin um for me it wasn't a method that i like but then they came out with soap soapy brow those little tins with a pomade and the brush to be able to do that and hold your brows up for that day so it wasn't a semi kind of permanent it was just for that day to hold up your brows and get create that like full fluffy look uh, so as you can see with with a uh, soap brow all the hairs are in an upwards motion 
up, 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 right? They're, it's like a more of a wild look. Then you have your laminated brows, which are more pressed down. And you can see that they look like, you know, when you think about lamination, um, I knew my mom, she always would uh, laminate my school projects uh, or, or any work that I had to add to my teacher. So it's that clean, pressed, shined look and it protects, right? But this is how the same thing, you can see the brows, they are so pressed down. There's a shine to them. Each hair is emphasized still, like you can see each individual hair. Uh, but they're not going wild. They are pressed down and following that shape of your brow bone. Okay. Then you have the fluffy feathery. This is my favorite because soapy brow, soap brow and laminated brows is not for everybody. Cause you can see it's one, ex like one extreme to the other when it comes to what your natural brows can look like. So I like to take the combination of both and create a fluffier feathery brow where at the beginning, the brows are going upwards and they're more looser, they're more fluffier. And then from the arch, to the tail end, you get that more pressed down look. So that way for a customer that's a little shocked, like for a customer that kind of wants to do get fluff into their brows, um, hopefully you guys can still hear me. I just saw a memo go on about internet connection. I hopefully you guys can hear me. If it's a client uh, that has, let me just see somebody's typing, just to make sure you can hear me. A memo just popped up. So I just want to make sure. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me still. So, um, if you have a client that wants to try this service out but is a little um, hesitant because of the wild look that it can create, um, oh, there we go. Oh, shoot, I didn't scroll down um, the bottom of my uh, messages. I am so sorry. Uh, I recorded. Okay, sorry, I didn't see all the questions, but there will be a recording. Sorry about that. I, I wasn't at the bottom of my chat box. Okay, so everybody can still hear me. Perfect. So um, that you would should do a feathery, fl uh, fluffy, uh, feathery brow to those that um, might be a little bit iffy about it. They want full brows, but they're a little bit scared of how uh, dominant it would look. Okay. Uh, let's go to the uh, recording. I mean, to the, not the recording, I'm looking at the chat box. Yes, you will be getting a recording. Uh, let's look at the kit, what the kit would look like. Uh, so the kit, uh, we know um, it comes in this nice cylinder container and you have your two brushes, your uh, flat wider end, so you can create nicely the shape of the uh, brows. You have the two sets of solutions, the bowls, so you can not intermix your solutions. These eye care pads they put in, because if you've seen one of my webinars, which is on our website, how to add value to your lash lift services by using these eye care pads to give them a treatment at the same time. So whether it's a lash service or brow service, if it's a lift or a tint, you can use these eye care pads to treat your customer at the same time. You can add a three to $5 extra a fee to the service uh, just to cover the cost of these eye care pads. They have hyaluron, vitamin E, aloe vera. They help with puffiness. They help with fine lines. But how much more you'll set yourself apart differently it, when you give that wow brow experience and you're giving them a treatment as well. Okay. The new solution, excuse me, times are six and four minutes. So they're even faster, uh, which gives you a total of 10 minutes of just a solution time so you know you can probably complete this in a half an hour um especially if you're not there's no shaping or there's no like hd brow that you have to do at the end where you have to add some pencil okay uh the solutions i always like to put a little bit of what's in the ingredients uh keratin and cysteine so you will have a nourishing lash lift i mean brow lift at the same time as your brows are are working the solution to break down the bonds in the keratin you're getting a, a a treatment at the same time so it's really good to know what's in these that you know they're, they're the majority of the lash permanent solutions are our lash perm solution and neutralizer are the same, but there's slight different ingredients as into how much care that manufacturer wants to put into the hairs that are on our face. So that's the nice thing about Refectisil, uh, that whatever you're working on, it's going to help with the hair development and it won't uh, damage the structure and it will continue, it will condition it. Um, we have our aftercare. So I do hear a lot of feedback from people on this uh, for a perfect finish. So you can hydrate, moisturize your, your brows, but also uh, to protect them, but to protect the color. So if somebody has um, a hard time keeping the tint, and maybe it lasts two weeks, even though you as a professional are doing it all correctly, following the ratios, cleaning the prepping and aftercare, sometimes some people, depending on their lifestyle, it doesn't last as long. So this would be a good product that you can give them as a uh, sell to them as a retail to take home and use it every morning. I like to use it every morning because it gives a nice gloss and hydration to my brows. And if I've done a brow lamination and it's reaching the 
fourth week where they start to fall back down, I could use this to hold them into, into shape as well until say you were, uh, sorry, five minutes, say you were the next uh, person, I mean, the next visit. Okay, sorry, distraction. My model <laughs> wants to know. Um, I just wanted five minutes because I had a hard time at the beginning to set it up. So she'll come back in five minutes. Um, okay, so this retail item too, people put it right away into their um, a, a fee. So if you have a hard time of retailing, like uh, selling, um, people would like to will include this on your first clients into the uh, service fee. So if it costs this product costs forty bucks, they would add that into this service of a brow lamination and tint and that way they get it right away in their hands and they're using it right away as opposed to saying oh yeah it's a great product but i don't know if i want it now i'll get it next time and they never do or so forth right once they try it they will see that this is a product they're going to want to replenish okay uh, right here, we're just showing a nice before and after picture so that uh, people can see the emphasis and the difference of doing a brow lamination. The brows look fuller, but also when you tint, it adds that more depthness. Okay. <clears throat> I like to put a little bit of our profitability because this is really good to um, know about the brow lamination kit. So since we have a major, we have a half and half of Canadian and US. I do have both, both pricings in here. A brow lamination service can go from 30 to 45 minutes. This all depends on if you're shaping at the end, if you're tinting, you're shaping, and if you're doing that HD brow with a pencil fill in, right? Some people do do that complete brow look because if they're going out that night, they have that pencil effect to add that more depthness. But once that gets washed off, they still have the darkness and the fullness of the brow lamination and the um, uh, tint. So uh, between $75 and $90, you would charge for a service of a um, brow lamination. And uh, you can achieve about 12 to 15 services of a brow lamination with one kit. So your kit costs you, whether in the US or Canada, say $129, $130, or $120, um, as you can see here on the slide. If you were to take the 12 services, just 12 you can do up to 15 depending on the thickness and severity like the, the brows but if you take the 12 times it by the 75 you can make 900 plus revenue out of one brow lamination kit so these are easy quick add-on services that don't break the pocket but uh you get great revenue with them and as you can see down here if you were to do a complete like as i mentioned a brow lamination a tint a shape or HD, like where you're going to add a pencil or something like that, you can go up to $150 to $200 for that service, to, for that complete combo of that service. So, and depending on your demographics, you want to work with your demographics. You don't want to charge something that's too heavily because the people in your area don't have that expense. So always look at that as well. So benefit for the salon, a brow lift is the perfect way to get especially especially disruptive and stubborn eyebrow hairs into tip-top shape. You can cover any gaps, which is really nice. If the gaps are like minimal, if they're very massive missing, it's hard because now you're accentuating that brow and those gaps are showing even more. Uh, they might show a little bit less, actually less, but they're still going to be there because there's so much that the that the um, brow animation can cover um, if there's major patchiness going on. But if there's some gaps, it will cover it perfectly and then you fill it, uh, fill it in with a tint. Okay. Um, and that you can generate valuable extra revenue with this new trend service and use the opportunity to increase your customer loyalty. So your customer will be coming back. Okay. They, they will be coming back to you because they will see that uh, you're offering the service and they have, they don't have to go somewhere else. Benefit for the customer while well, laminating and tinting brows has an immediate effect on the density and shape of the eyebrows. They'll have fuller looking and denser eyebrows, but the natural way uh, by so this way they can just walk out and have fuller uh, brows without any painful uh, treatments such as microblading or, or permanent makeup and so forth, okay? And it is suitable for um, uh, bushy, stubborn hair because you can relax those unruly hairs as well, right, and tame them. So this is a really good way to also use for males as well. So I will be doing a male webinar in October, uh, where I will be showcasing the brow lamination on a male, how to subtly do it. Okay, so I wanted to add this slide here of our new makeup line by Refectisil. 
Uh, we have a light brown, medium brown, dark brown. These are beautiful. I have them filled in my eyebrows. I love them. They're a little bit on the higher end, but the pencils are so rich. You can use them as a professional to end your clients when I talk about that HD brow uh, or, you, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing retail product with the highlighter. They have a soft a silk finish, especially this, the, the highlighter. Um, after you do a brow line, in a shape, you can highlight the brow bone. You can highlight the tail ends as well. I even put some here on my cupid's uh, um, bow, is that what they call it, just to uh, accentuate that part. So they're beautiful, high quality products. So before we get into our demo, I'm going to talk about a little bit about more educational opportunities that we have. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, you uh, we'll have October 26th. I will have a male grooming webinar. You can register at uh, reflectuseducation.com or you'll always see it on my Instagram account I'm in my bio that you can register for the uh, webinars. We do also, I do also work with a company uh, with the brand Quran Lab and we sometimes do cross branding where we show the bravado which is a, a wax for the brows that you can you can shape precisely some of you might have been using might be using already Quran lab from all these webinars it's an amazing amazing wax you will love it it's like no other and if you want to register this is a paid class because you do get a certificate so this one on brazilian um uh with the brazilians and brilliance it's going to be a very unique class uh, you will have not seen anywhere else with special techniques and so forth. So if you're wanting to just go to the website, if you're in the U S or in Canada, and it will take, it will take you to a page where it shows you the distributor and you can make the purchase of the class through there. And then you can uh, receive the link to attend and then also get a certificate. Okay. Uh, unfortunately the global ones that I do no certificates paid classes I do with distributors, we do offer certificates. So always check our website for any paid classes we do in Refectisil that offers a certificate. We also have our infection control education. If you're in the, in the U.S., you can by all means do this program because the knowledge is universal. It's just the product portion of it is only a Canada brand. Uh, and in, in the U.S., we'll be probably creating this down, down the road. But this is a free online infection control program for you to be able to understand how to work through this pandemic, but to up your knowledge and to give you the highest standards, because sometimes we lack that when it comes to infection control. And we got to keep our, our customers and ourselves and our staff and so forth uh, safe as we deal with new viruses emerging as well. Uh, the final thing is a contest. Hello, hello, Mara. Uh, uh, the contest, if you want to win the brow lamination can, you can start giving your clients these fall brows. Well, complete these three steps. Follow us on Instagram. If you're already following us. Uh, like us on Facebook and leave a review. We love to read reviews. Let us know what you thought of the class. Also, go to any of our latest Refectisil posts. Like the post and drop a comment, including the hashtag FallReadyBrows. Thank you, Mara. Fall ready brows. Make sure you put that um, hashtag because then I will, that's how I will know you're entering uh, the contest. And it ends October 3rd and I will announce the winner on Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, sorry, Instagram. Okay, awesome. Contests, contests are always fun. So for you new ones, uh, get registering. <laughs> Do these three steps and you'll and be entered into the, the, the prize. Final thing before I get my model into the bed is to show us our, you know, social media and so forth. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, we got a Refectisil North America because we service North America. Also, I have my Browista by Refectisil as a trainer. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, Refectisil North America. You can review us, uh, tell us how the class was, and also visit our educational website, which is www.refectisileducation.com. And then for any educational assistance or if you're struggling or you need to ask any questions, education at cbngroup.com would be the um, email you would go to and I will assist you. Okay, so I'm going to prepare my model, but I see a question by Jennifer. Do you have any lash lift coming up? We do. Uh, I just haven't posted it yet, meaning that I'm working on my November, December webinars. Uh, so we will have a uh, lash lift for sure because it is for the uh, fall uh, ready brow, like, I mean, I fall for the holiday 
holiday special edition for uh, what you can do to complete your client's look. So it would be everything, including a lash lift. Okay, so look out for that. I still haven't created the the uh, advertisement or the date yet. So I, I will do that pretty shortly. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is close off my camera because I have to bring it over to my model. So yeah, you can go down. I have to bring it over to my model, but I just don't want you guys to get dizzy as you're seeing it move around. So I'm just going to turn off. Thank you, Renee. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to bring it over to my model. And any questions you have, feel free to answer them. Because as I'm doing the, um, the demo, I will be looking at the screen to answer any questions. Okay. So I'm going to get this ready. Give me a minute or two. Oh, let me just a minute. Okay, I'm going to prepare myself as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the camera and you guys will be able to let me know if uh, to positioning, I will be able to see it too, but you guys can let me know what feels good for you. Just give me one second. I'm going to change into the camera view. So now you should be able to see a bigger screen. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna center it. Let me just, I have a little program that has to load up so I can center it properly. Just being really stubborn and going very slow. There we go. So let's position. Give me one second. Camera. Logic. Sometimes technical difficulty. I'm not quite sure what it says this. It should work. Any questions so far for any of the newer ones here today that I can help you with? In the meantime, while I figure out this camera issue. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I've been working all these webinars and just today it decides not to work. Position it differently. Give me one more second. Okay, that's fine. What we'll do. Pretty close. Okay, so I think that should be okay. How do you guys feel about that? I'm um, usually with my other platform, I'm able to zoom in, but you guys can see that okay? Can you see her brows okay? And there are questions. Okay, so, okay, perfect. Thank you guys. I have done the brow lamination on my daughter and husband. My daughter lost the results the next day for my husband. I, I left double the time and I did get his dress and did get his brows stay put. So, I wouldn't recommend double the time. What I would recommend if you have somebody that you're working with stubborn, uh, thick lashes is to do the uh, eight and five minutes, the original timing. So if you have the two versus eight and five minutes, um, then you can um, 
double, not double that, but you can go 12 instead of the, of the um, lash perm. But if you have the six and four minutes, I would just do the eight and five. Okay. Uh, so, and also what helps too, if you're working with stubborn lash uh, brows is to use the plastic wrap because that will help those uh, brows to go into that position you want them to go. You're, you're co coercing it um, more with the aid of the plastic film. Okay. Um, let me just get the gloves. I'm going to start to do the uh, prep. There was another question. Do you still recommend recommend tint for darker hair? I have always heard it's mainly for light hair. No, you can tint darker hair because also, like I tint mine, uh, sometimes, you know, they're a little bit sparse looking. So when you tint, like I have black brows and I want to make them look a little bit more fuller, maybe I might use just a natural brown. I don't have to necessarily use black. I can use the natural brown just to add more depth into the brow. So the, it's for any color of brows, any degree of lightness or, or darkness, you can still tint. Uh, is that what you meant? Or for, yeah, tint for darker hair. Perfect. How long would you wait between lamination service? I would do it every six weeks. I wouldn't do it any, any earlier than that. Uh, even if their brows tend to fall back to the shape, um, get them to use the, uh, styling gel. Is there a tint kit with several colors available? Yes, there is. It's called the blue kit. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of, uh, questions. It is a blue starter kit that has the six basic, like the six most popular colors to use. Um, we also have a lash and brow bar that has all of them. Is there, do you use glue to hold the brows? We don't, you can, but the manufacturer doesn't teach it. So you can, but be mindful and use very little glue. Do not go crazy with the glue because it becomes a barrier. Uh, is this, is the camera, I know Isabel, you said to move it. Is it okay? I can move it a little bit higher to get to her brows. Uh, facial cleanser or facial cleansers, okay. They're okay after 24 hours. Um, if they're going to use it that night, that it after their service, it has to be oil free. Uh, but they should avoid their brows anyways. If you clean the rest of their skin area, but avoid their brows, um, because you, you, during that 24 hours, the hair is trying to follicles trying to seal. So you don't want to do anything that might lessen the uh, service, um, the service results. Do you sell the plastic film? No, we don't. So I'm just using the Saran wrap from the grocery store. Uh, that that um, uh, I put over, I cut it into sl slices, like to uh, layers, I cut it and then I just put it onto the brows. Okay, the, the kit, how long will it last? It has a, it, the tubes have expiry dates in them. So for example, I'm gonna start prepping too, but I will get the, give me one second. And the tubes have an expiring date on them. So, for example, in your kit, if you were to, um, so in your kit, if you were to open up the containers, I'm going to show them to you, the solutions. It has two, so it comes in a box like this, and it has your tubes. It's a little bit bright. Oh, camera went blurry. There we go. So you have the tubes like this, and at the back end which is really hard because i have a light on on the back end mine says november 2022 so that's where it will when they were expired because it's basically just the solutions that are in the in the product that in the kit that are going to expire your brushes and your so forth are fine uh so so basically this kit is good for 2022 and all you have to do is replenish your um replenish the solutions that's it okay so i'm going to prep quickly Okay, the first step to prepping is your eye makeup remover, okay? It's very important. It's non-oily and it has hair strengthening properties. Even if your client comes in without any makeup, please do this step because there's also environmental factors that play a role and um, there could be sweat, dust, or other residue of makeup if they were like uh, powder, see, for example. So if they were some kind of powder and like that, it, it can get brushed into the brows as well. So you wanna make sure that the canvas is nice and clean. That's the first step to your prep. They will be coming out really soon. Uh, well, we, we, will, we will be getting pretty soon a cleanser. Okay, the camera did go a little bit blurry, so I'm gonna correct that.
Maybe I need to shift a little bit more. Oh, wait, this way. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Okay. The next step is... Oh, sorry. That's not the saline solution. The next step is the saline solution. Okay. Very important. This is to double cleanse and clean the area and and secure that the canvas is free. I'm just going to look at some... Uh, which kit? That's the lash lift that they were asking, right? How long would the kit last? Is that the lash lift or the tinting? If we were to start laminating brows of, of, of the lash lift kit, we would be just missing the eyebrow brushes. Yeah, you'll be missing the eyebrow brushes and the the uh, treatment pads that I'm going to show onto my, um, on my model today. I will show you that afterwards, the treatment pads to use. So that's the only difference from the lash lift. Nope, the solutions are the same. The solutions from the lash lift and the brow lamination are the same solutions. Just the brow lamination already has the new sets of the six and four minutes. I believe now our lash lift kits should have the six and four minutes and the new lifter tool as well. Uh, where can I buy a makeup remover and saline solution on Uh If you reach out to me, I can let you know. And I can let you know where, where, where you can, when you tell us where you're, oh, there you go. If you're in Arizona. Okay, so let's get with the saline solution. So remember, the saline solution is an important step. You should be using this as well in your lash lifts because it secures that double cleanse. Okay. So now that I know my area is nice and clean, now it's where, now if you're going to be placing those eye care pads, I will show it today. But this is what the box looks like, and there's a pack of 10. They are a little bit on the higher end as well because of all the treatments that are in there. But you can add that, like I said, 2 to $3 more onto your um, service fee, okay? So when you open up the box, you have 10 of these little packages, okay? I love using these. I use them at home too. I even put them in the fridge so that you get a really nice, cool effect. Yep, yep, yellow, yep. Here, I'll show you again the saline. There you go. It, uh, the solution's yellow. See? It's got a darker hue. Yeah, so that's correct. That's your saline. Okay, so what you do is that you have... I can't zoom it in more because my program is not working. I can try again. Um, if, I, if I move my camera in closer to her brows, uh, it will keep going blurry. I can try again to open up the, the other... Hear me? I got kicked off. Sorry about that. I was trying to see if the um... because it will start to get very blurry. I'm not quite sure what's going on here and it's not working. I'm so sorry about that. So we'll have to leave it the opposite way. Okay, sorry about that. Let me go back to my. Technical difficulties sometimes cause a, a more issue. So I can't, if I bring it lower, it's just going to keep on going blurry. So I would just, and I'm losing the, so I can just do it like that, if that's okay. Any like any movement I do, it's gonna make it go blurry. My platform was, um, you guys can't see the video? 
Uh, the eye care pads, I will let Renee get to you to that because uh, U.S. or Canada. Um, yeah, I'll answer just that the camera part. I have to answer it because okay, you can see perfect because uh, people. I want people to be able to see properly, so I try to put it in a little bit more. Sorry if it gets a little blurry, but it's because I'm closer now. So this is how the eye care pads look. I lower you open up. I'm gonna place them. And like I said, if you put them uh, in the in the fridge too. Now these are great to use as well for your uh, lash lifts to hold the lashes down. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put that as well. And during this whole service, they are getting an eye treatment. Okay. <laughs> it's got a nice cooling effect too. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So now that we prep the brows I want to brush them a little bit she's got her brows lay out really nicely they're not like crisscross or anything like that but I'm just brushing them out just to see the true way they look okay so we brush them out okay perfect and now what we're going to do is now we can't we can't um line up the brow with uh protection cream because if that when you start brushing the brows during the half time What's going to happen is that this, this cream is going to blend in with the solution. We don't want that and it won't work. So what you have to do is be mindful to remove the solution from the skin as quick as you can. So let me pour my pea size amount. Give me one second. So you squeeze your pea size amount. Your pea size amount varies to who you're... Uh, to, to what type of brows you're working with, okay? Okay. So the new six and four minutes, just so that you know, will look like this. This is the whole, this is the old one that has the red square with the old timing. This is the new one. There's no timing whatsoever. It says with keratin, it's a pinkish color, and that's the new solutions of six and four minutes that you know. You can still use the older one if you have it. It's still effective to whatever your date says. For example, this older one that I have that's eight and five minutes, it works till 2022 November as well. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to squeeze my pea size amount. Into my bowl. Perfect. So there's my my solution. It's pinkish already, which is fine. I like to stir it a little bit. Just to mix it, spread it. And then I'm going to start applying. Now, what we're going to achieve with this one is the fluffy feathery. We're going to do where we begin the beginning to be up. And then we'll round it to a laminated. So right now, you can't really push it to that. I tried to brush it into that shape. But because we need to break down the bonds in keratin, the, the important step when you're going to shape the brows is after the solution, before you put the neutralizer you're going to shape, brush the brows to the direction where the client wanted them to look like. Was it a soap brow? Was it a, um, a laminated brow or so forth? Just before you do your um, neutralizer, you have to brush the hairs into the appropriate position because a neutralizer is what's going to set the hair into the new shape. Now, do you see it's a little bit on the skin? What I make sure right away is to grab Q-tip, always have Q-tip on hand and wipe it off from the skin so it doesn't sit on there for long. The reasoning why you don't want it on the skin is because it could cause some redness. And if the client is a little bit more sensitive, lighter skin, you don't want to them to walk out like red brows. Like, like they usually if they get wet, they might um, wax, they might be, but you want to avoid also the skin being anything sensitive for waxing as well. So I remove it right away. Okay. 
So I'm just putting just a little bit more on this side because I do know the tear here tends to be a little bit more stubborn. And I will show the plastic wrap. Okay. So once again, if there's anything on the skin, I just want to wipe it. Perfect. So now what you would do is you would get your plastic film and you would put that on. Give me a second. There we go. And we're going to apply that onto the brows. Now, if you're using a plastic wrap onto the brows, the timing gets shortened by a minute each. So instead of six minutes, it's going to be five. Instead of four minutes, it's going to be three. So yes, nails are us in Canada perfect. You would do this before waxing correct. Yes. Waxing is the last step before um, the aftercare, before you uh, put the uh, gel. Nope, there shouldn't be any sensitivity. That's why it's best to uh, clean the skin area so that if you have to wax any hair that's on the skin, um, it won't cause any reactions. Now, they will probably turn red, red from waxing, but at least the skin won't be sensitive from the solution. If you had left the solution on the skin this whole duration of 30 to 45 minutes uh, or whatever, the timing that you're using, it won't be great for the, the skin, right? Okay, so I got my plastic wrap. So instead of six minutes, this is staying on for four minutes. I mean, five minutes, but at 2.5 minutes, I am going in and I'm going to uh, brush the brows because I want to see how they're taking, how they're forming. Just in case of that question that was before, that the person said, I, you know, my, my I forgot the name, sorry, they said that their daughter didn't turn out the next day they went down. Um, if you brush halfway through, you'll see which section of the hairs are not taking and which are taking so that you can focus more solution on those that are not taking and maybe add a minute or two on that section, wipe off, wipe off the rest, but add another minute or so to the other section. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Big influencers that brand, of brands that do waxing before the lamination. The thing about Reflectisil is they want to avoid any irritation to the skin. It's supposed to be a relaxing service. So if you were to wax before and you have open pores and that solution goes into the skin and the client to those open pores and the client is sensitive to, you're going to create a huge reaction and inflammation. So it's not suggested. It's a best practice, I guess we can say, that do the waxing for last, okay? I reduce it because of the wrap, correct. Um, I, I, it's, it's two layers because I went to the areas that I felt were, uh, Robin, that I felt they were a little bit um, stubborn. That's why I went back and applied. That's just me. I can see which areas needed a little bit more application. I've done Lori before, I may be a little bit by the brow, by the arch, a little bit stubborn the hair. Okay, so in a little time, it's gonna be my half time mark, and I'm going to have to remove. I'm not removing, I'm gonna remove the plastic wrap at two and a half minutes, and I'm going to test the brows to see how they're taking. Okay, so I still have another minute. So, and then we'll take it off, because remember, instead of doing five, we did four minutes, okay? And at 2.5, I'm going to go check in. Now, if you didn't use the plastic wrap and you're using six minutes, then at three minutes, you're going to go in and check how the brows are taking. Okay. Uh, look darker. Are you tinting? Nope. Nope. It might be just a solution because it's wet that the brows look darker. And also the, the lighting, the camera, like, yeah. But it's just the solution. That's it. The lash perm. Do you glue down first like the lash? Okay, so if you were going to use the glue, yes. Before you put the, the perm solution, you would glue them down. But just be very mindful and don't go too heavy with the glue. Uh, the great thing about Reflectisil is they you don't have to use that extra step. The brow lamination will work regardless. Like it will work without having to use the glue. That avoids you to have to use so much product. And that also alleviates longer timing. 
So, um, because if you're going to put glue, maybe sometimes the six and four minutes might not get to the hairs because of the amount of glue that you might be using. So you'd have to extend it to that eight and five minutes. So it's test and trial. It's for you to test and see. They haven't provided any uh, guidance on that because they don't, uh, they haven't created the bralimation to use the glue. Okay, but you can use the Reflectisol glue. They, I've asked them. Okay, so now it's time to remove one part. My voice is breaking. Sorry, is it breaking for everybody? Please let me know. It's good? Okay, maybe the, uh, for whoever said that I lost you, uh, just maybe uh, refresh. Refresh. It might be your internet connection, too. Okay, so I'm going to go in, going to get my brush that I use, but on the other end of our nice brow with the tool brushes is that nice silicone spoolie. This spoolie is awesome to use because it's delicate on the hair, especially after doing this treatment. You don't want to use any abrasive uh, mascara ones. So I'm going to remove this, brush it, and you see now her brows are going like upwards. They're actually staying in the place. But remember how I said this part here is where it's stubborn right here but you see how they're all like now sticking upwards if you can if you can see that so what i'm gonna do i'm going to go up here i'm going to i still have some solution in my in my bowl i'm going to put it in the areas that i feel might still need it. If you have to put it over in the whole brow because you feel like the whole brow needs to be saturated, you can. So place it on there. Clean the skin. Okay, close it up. Do the same thing with the other side. Okay, check it. See if it's taking its shape. If the hairs are so relaxed, now wherever you brush them, they're staying. Before they wouldn't stay up like that. It would fall down. Okay. And then if you have a little bit more solution left and you just want to add it into those areas that you brush, you can. Okay. Then you clean the area. Very important. And as you can see, her skin has not turned red whatsoever because I'm being mindful not to leave that solution on there for too long. I mean, on the skin. Okay, so this plastic wrap is what's gonna help stubborn uh, brows as well. Okay, so now I just resume my two and a half minutes and let it end. And then we're gonna remove it. Okay, dry, 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 dry is removal all the time. Not until the end if you wanna apply, but I've, uh, I've learned to do dry, you know, when I'm tinting, I remove it dry, dry, dry. and I don't you really use um uh, what do you call it to water anymore as much. Okay. Any questions? I hope I didn't mess any on the top when we had this uh voice breakage. But so far, straightforward. Doing this halfway check mark is very important because how else will you know if it's taking or not? And then when you're done and some of the brows did it take, well, now you gotta go lay them down again and you gotta redo it again, cleanse and everything. So might as well know it from the uh, halfway time, okay? Are you doing tinting after perm? Yes, I am. Yep, we're gonna tint so you can see the complete brow package, yeah. Just, we won't be doing any shaping. Okay, so I still have a minute left. So far, so good. It's not a hard service at all. It's actually a pretty faster and easier uh, then lash lift because lash lift you have each individual lash to get onto the um, uh, silicone pad. Sometimes they're really stubborn; they don't want to roll up. So it's a little bit. Obviously, the service of a lash lift is longer. But once you know how to navigate through a lash lift, a brow elimination is, e is easy peasy. Okay. Everything good? Any questions? I have just that solution. I have that solution time left over, so I'm just waiting on that. Uh, also, some points are uh, talking about patch tests and stuff. If this is a new client, do a consultation, please. Uh, 48 hours. We, we say 48 hours before because 
A person can react in an hour, a person can react in 24 hours. So we give them the standard time of 48 hours uh, to find out if they have any allergic reactions. So get them in before the service book, uh, do a consultation, go through the consent form with them, find out what is it they want to change about their brows, what color were they looking for? Are they changing their hair color that you want to have to match? You know, so forth. Ask everything you can to get to understand what your client wants so that you can make them happy. Then as they're filling the consent form, you can put the test of the solution number one, solution number two, and then the tint mixed with the oxidant. So you'll have three different sections on the inner forearm or behind the ear. So you can test out if the solutions are okay in the tint so can your client won't have a reaction in the bed. The best thing is to know if they have a reaction earlier then you doing the service on their brows and then you burn skin or you leave a marking and so forth. You should, it, it is a, so it should be a relaxing service. So please do that um, uh, consent form and patch test 48 hours before their treatment. Do you start timing as soon as it goes on or, or when both brows are saturated already? I do when both brows are, but people, I've just been doing this for so long that I know when to remove the second brow. Uh, so uh, people like to do two timers They'll have a timer for the first brow and a timer for the second brow, just so they make it consistent and even. It's all up to you. The more you get a handy of it, you become your internal clock. Okay, so let's remove it. Dry Q-tip. We'll remove the plastic wrap. upwards motions. I try to respect where I want the new, how the hairs to go. Now say for example, you felt that you needed to, there's some section that needed still working. You can just go back and put the solution just in the section. Okay. Perfect. Once it's nice and dry. So because this was the second brow I put, I just wait a little bit, a couple of seconds, but I'm going to prepare my neutralizer, squeeze my pea size amount. Now remember, before you put the neutralizer, this is where you have to shape the brows into place. Uh, do you guys have a standard consent form somewhere that we can use? Yes, we haven't put it on the website yet, but you can email me at education at CBN Group. But you should be getting at the end of this at the end of this uh, webinar, you get a thank you email, and the consent form should be in there. If it's not, just email me back. Um, I got brow lamination done on myself before two weeks later. I felt like my eyebrows hair started curling and falling out a lot. Uh, you found that a lot of the hairs are falling out. Did you do proper aftercare and how long did you leave the solution on as well? Um, are we taking any medication that it could affect? That's another thing too, that we always have to check with your physician. Uh, certain medications for the skin can affect. So you just got to be careful. We don't know all of them. Uh, we don't know we're not physicians but sometimes when you do that consent form and you somebody writes that you're taking medication I always make it uh, um, my best interest to ask them what it's for um, even though it could be a little bit private for them but you need to know uh, just in case if they're saying oh I'm taking skincare products and stuff like like you know AHPs or if they were doing Accutane you wouldn't be uh, doing the service period you would wait like six months after they're done taking Accutane to start doing this because it's still in their system so it's stuff like that that you need to uh, find out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is brush them into the shape that I want. Oh, why is it doing this again? So instead of doing four minutes, it's going to be three minutes for the, um, for the uh, sorry, what's it called again? For the neutralizer, because if I'm going to put the plastic wrap on there. So now I'm going to brush them upwards. I want these beginning of the brows to go upwards. Up, 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 up. She does have brows that curve a little bit here, like her, her shape. So we we'll do the best to make them go up. And then the laminated look. Okay, so hopefully you saw how I, how I brushed those. Just these beginnings, we want them to go up. It's also good that they wait for any shaping service because it's easier to relax the hairs when they're like longer and stuff like that. It's supposed to they cut them short if they trim their their brown hairs. Okay, so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the 
uh, neutralizer. Okay, same way. It's a creamier, it's a creamy white substance. The neutralizer and the neutralizer now. So when you're applying it, try to go the same way as the hair you're shaping it into. If you start putting it different ways, it's going to form to that way. So respect that new direction that you brushed the hair. Okay. So this one, I'm curving it because I'm making it more of a laminated. If it was going to be a soapy, all this would be up. Okay. Do the other side. I usually don't use a plastic wrap, but you can. So I'll I'll put it so that you can see it with. Okay, I'm just making sure that saturated enough, respecting up, 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 and then curve it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the area. I will get to the questions. Give me a second. I'm gonna just put the plastic wrap on. And instead of four minutes, it's going to be three because I'm gonna use the plastic wrap. Okay, perfect. And this is the way to also do the laminated look. Okay, so uh, for patches, do I apply both creams, each cream and one? So you'll have, if you're doing a patches for brow lamination, you will have three sections. Your first section is, so you'll have one section, if you're using your inner forearm, you'll have one section here of your uh, step number one, lash perm, another spot here for your neutralizer. And you might want to put like a mark, like, uh, or take a picture, like mark it, take a picture so you know what each solution, what step you did it. And then the third would be your tint and your oxidant. You have to mix your tint and your oxidant together to see uh, the reaction. So you will have three. If you do the glue, you'll have a fourth. You can do it in the inner forearm or behind the ear. Okay. Um, Tanya, did I? Maybe I missed it, but what's the suggestion for pregnant women? Okay, so it's fine. It will work. But sometimes because of the hormones, I was told within the second set trimester, it might be a hit or miss it might work or it might not work depending on the hormones but it's safe to do you know they say usually don't use any chemicals when you're pregnant you know don't color your hair and so forth but it is safe to use um yeah so with hormones too exactly you answered it so you don't know necessarily how the re results will be and how accurate they would be because all the hormones are out of whack uh, as a pregnant woman, <laughs> so you want to be careful. Yeah, yeah. After the brow lamination, you can trim because you remember when you relax. Lori's brows were seem pretty trimmed. They're they're short. Um, other people's brows, when they they're not trimmed, and I relax them, they're so long uh, because you're 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 stretching it almost out. When they're relaxed, they're longer. So you have to trim it. Yeah, yeah. If the client wants, so the plastic cuts the time in one minute for both permanent gels. Yes, it does. Correct. Is the aftercare the same as the styling gel? Oh, nope, styling gel is the aftercare. You are correct, Andrea. Okay, so we have another minute. Perfect. Is it, is it straightforward so far? So far, now sometimes I don't usually use the plastic wrap, uh, but if I do have stubborn brows, yes, I'll use it. But the majority of time, if the brows are like just natural, thin to natural, I don't hardly ever use the plastic wrap. Um, and especially, I don't use it for the second step, for neutralizer. I tend to use it for the lash perm just to make that penetration better of the um, uh, lash perm so that it, it relaxes the hair better. But after that, once it's relaxed to the degree that we need it to, uh, the neutralizer will do its work. So you don't necessarily have to use the plastic wrap. What do you recommend, what do you recommend to use for men's wildly growing eyebrows? Yes, you can use, you can use the solution number one. 
uh, to relax them. But if you've relaxed it a little too much and you need to give them some shape, you'd have to use the uh, neutralizer. So for um, the brow lamination, for the lash perm, I can put it on and I can monitor it. Like it's six minutes, right, for the lash perm. But if I don't want to relax them too, too much, I just, if they have like curls or kinks in their hair and I want to relax it just enough to, re to, to spread that kink, I might not have to leave it the full six minutes, depending on the degree and the thickness of the male brow. And that's what I'll be showing on the October webinar. When do you apply the glue? It is when needed only? Yeah, the glue, see, Reflectisol does not teach or give any marketing advice with the glue, meaning instructions with the glue because they created the kit to be without the glue. So you lessen a step, you lessen, you know, you don't have to spend more money. And also your timing is faster as opposed to waiting for the glue, waiting for it to dry. So uh, you don't need to use it. But some people want to, uh, especially when they have really stubborn um, brows to work with. So you got to put it after you've cleansed. Then you put the glue to hold the, the brows into place. And then you put the solution. But make sure that your solution, is, your, your, your glue is not too heavy or too thick. Because during that six minutes, because our solution times are faster, faster now. So during that six minutes, what's going to happen is that it's not going to have time for the solution to penetrate in if you put too much thick glue. And you might not know that. And then you will have to redo it again for your clients. So just be careful not to go crazy with the glue. Mm -hmm. um, the new glue, the new peachy glue dries pretty fast. So just, uh, just make sure it doesn't look wet. Right, it dries really fast. If it was the original glue, like the, the one that the clear one, you would have to wait 15 to 20 seconds uh, for it to dry. But with the new glue, it dries pretty fast, depending on how much you put to, but it does dry faster. Um hopefully I answered up to date now. I'm going to remove. Let's remove it now. Dry dry q tip. So remove the plastic, plastic wrap, toss it away. Dry, dry, and you still want to respect that new direction. I can see until my Q-tip is dry. Now, if for tinting, you want to do a little bit of a quick cleanse, you can do the saline solution, right? Usually I remove it nicely with my with my uh, Q-tip that there's no solution. But what I'm going to do is I am going to brush it just to make sure up, 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 because now I'm going to tint just so I can see. And you will find right here, this section here is where a lot of brows get really stubborn. So you might have to put more solution in that section or leave it on longer. So up, 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 and then start to round it. Okay. So it's staying into that place. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna do the tinting. So because in, in, in honor of fall, <laughs> coming in, I think this weekend, 25, I can't remember, but I'm going to introduce a little bit of the chestnut. I asked Lori if that's okay. I'm gonna put a pin size amount of the chestnut into her brown in, in Ode to Joy of the fall season, okay? So this is where you can start at giving your clients that warm color tone. Okay, so I'm going to grab the natural brown. I can even do like grab, I'll do natural brown. Natural brown. I'll put the protection cream. So now it's very important to use the protection cream because the skin, if it has touched the skin, the solution, it's going to be a little bit, the pores are going to be attracting that tint and you might have unnecessary staining. Uh, can we use a saline solution? Yes. If you want it to clean before you put the tinting, you can do the saline solution. Okay, so now I put some protection cream here on my glove, the white part, and I spread it around the brow. Is there anything you can apply to slow growing of the hair of the iris to stop the growing of the brows? Like they're growing pretty quick, or you mean to boost? So 
to slow growing of the hair. I think you mean to boost, like a lash lifter, a uh, lash or brow booster. We do have one. Rebecca Salt does have one. And maybe afterwards when I put the tint on, I can try and find it and show it to you. But we do have a brow booster to help the uh, lashes and brows grow. And you can use the same bottle for both lashes and brows. Sometimes other brands, they make you buy two different ones. So now because I'm not going to be brushing the brows, I can put the protection cream. Just careful not to get it onto the hairs. And the protection cream gives its added touch of a treatment as well because it does have awesome pro properties to moisturize the skin as well. Okay. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my and the the chest and I'm only been putting a pin size amount. Uh, I will let you know. Uh, any lash serum can be used to be used on the brows for growth. Yeah, any lash, but Refectosol does have one as well. Just in case that you were wondering if uh, Refectosol has one. It's a nice holographic uh, tube. Okay, so give me one second. I will mix it. I'll let you know. The ratio in general is two centimeters of tint or three quarters of an inch to 15 drops of cream or 10 drops of liquid. Okay. So that it's equal parts. Some people don't know, don't really get how to uh, make the um, equal parts when it comes to the cream, to the liquid. Okay. So. I took the majority of my brown. Our browns do have a warm undertone too. The majority of the brown was the tint and just a little bit of the chestnut. Okay. So uh, that's my two centimeters and I'm going to add my developer, my 15 drops of cream. Yeah. You don't want to, you want to have just, you don't want to make it too liquidy. You want to make it more thicker. Like you don't want to make it too watery especially when you're doing the brows too, because you don't want it to be dripping down the face. Okay, so I mix my oxidant in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna stir it. I just like to stir it until, like we said, we get a nice, creamy, uh, thicker substance. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix that. I find that some American is way too much. It is. So I have to relay that information because it's the direction of Refectosil. But for brows, um, I tend to cut it down to one centimeter. So if that's one centimeter, then I do five drops of liquid and seven drops of the cream. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes you do want a little bit of leftover of tint because when you go into the, uh, to take off a section to see how it's taking, I always suggest this. I get a lot of phone calls of professionals telling me, oh my gosh, my client hates their tint. It's too dark. I don't know how to lighten it. And you can't lighten it with their bleaching paste because it would only get darker. You need tint remover to slightly buff it, but that's where you check halfway. So it says now we say to leave it three minutes after a brow lamination. At a minute and a half, I'm going to check part of her brow to see how it's taking because I know now the brows are going to get much darker because of the development, the, the, what we did before, how we processed the hair before, it's going to accept the tint much faster, okay? Uh, we don't use Vaseline because it's very, 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 very highly oiled um, and comedogenic, so we just use the protection cream that's giving them a treatment at the same time. But if you wanna use Vaseline, you can. Uh, what is the trick of getting the tint developer to mix well? I always have issues with the game to mix well and do the correct, do you like the liquid? Like when you say you have, because you see mine, don't mix it just for like five seconds. That that's it. All this time I've been talking to you, I've been mixing it, and look how nice and creamy it is. So um, I use a lot the the cream because I also do beard tintings, and I use the bleaching paste, which requires just the cream. So, um, but I can easily use the liquid just the same and get amazing results. They both do the exact same thing. And it becomes preference to whoever's using it. Schools are usually taught with the liquid. So 
So you want to just be So what I'm going to do now is I like to take, it's going to remove the protection cream, but that's okay because I've already lined it out. I like to make it even. Okay, just so we don't uh, make the brows look uh, funky or weird, you want to make it nice and even. Okay, so that's going to stay on for three minutes, but as I mentioned, at a minute and a half. So I can start the timer for the left brow to start working for the three minutes. But at one minute and a half, I'm going to check it out. Okay. I will be back with the questions. Just give me to apply this. Okay, just going to clean it up. Now, if you feel you want to remove the whole brow, you can, or you can just remove a section of it. Her brows are pretty uniform, meaning the hair is the same from beginning to the end, the degree of thickness of her hair. So I can remove the tail end and be and check it out. But if you had like brows that were uh, different in consistency of thickness to thin, I would go to the part that's thicker in hair and check that out first because you want to make the tail end stay on longer to balance out the whole brow. So now is my halfway time. And I will go in and just test. I'm going to get you to tilt your, tilt your head. So the brows are, you can see, much darker. But I'm okay to leave it for the rest of the timing, okay? So I'm going to start, resume my time. I only have another minute and a half left. I still have some tint. That's why it's important to have some tint left over. I apply it. I'm going to clean it up too. Perfect. Okay, so we have about 30 seconds left. I will answer the questions. I just need to focus on this for the moment just so that we can remove it. So in 20 seconds, I can take it off. I'm just gonna get you to put your head back in the center there. Is the screen okay? It says it's fuzzy. Yeah, but they don't want the tinting part. You don't have to. The tinting part just emphasizes the um, the service more. Dry, dry, dry for the solution. Dry, dry, dry. Everything is done with dry. 
resistant gray hair, if it won't take the color period, and I know for my client, it won't take it. I will, um, I will put, uh, sorry, I will use the bleaching paste and pre-soften it three to five minutes. The, right. So you have to, the, the bleaching paste will break down that, uh, stubborn gray hair. So, but just leave it on for three to five minutes as a pre-softening. For the eye care patches, I'm giving her an eye treatment. This is a way to add value uh, or, you know, upscale your brow lamination services by giving your client a uh, um, eye treatment. So I'm going to remove dry. Oops. So I like doing it dry. I don't apply any more water. I just do it dry all the time. Till you start to see nothing left there. And then you can just brush it into place. Now, if my client's brows were uh, much, my hair was much darker, I would leave it longer but it's not, so I don't want to make the brows too. Okay, and then we remove the other side. Once again, I'm just using dry. And I'm going to brush them again. Because now they're staying into that place. So now it's where, now I, if you see a little bit of skin staining, like for example, I see a little bit up here, a little bit down there. What I like to do is grab a Q-tip. Grab my tint remover, just dampen the Q-tip because I don't want to wipe the whole brow. I just want to go in that section. Great. I don't want to touch the hair. I just want to clean it off the skin. And then now is where you would do like a shaping. If you had to do a shaping, you would do a shaping. Otherwise, you're gonna put the styling gel. So take, take a disposable mascara wands and apply the styling gel that we had mentioned. So this is what it looks like, right? Take that, take the disposable mascara wands. So you don't contaminate the tube because the tube has an applicator. Only if it's sold to, like if they get their own one, they can use the same applicator. But otherwise, you don't want to uh, cross-contaminate. So that's what you, how you would do your brow lamination. Let me just see what the questions are, because there is some several questions. 
Um, after you wax, if you need to put some aloe solution onto the skin, that's fine. I just don't put it on the brows. Uh, how do you handle versus gray? We, we said that in my ask question, right? We answered that. Is the bleaching paste develop is the bleaching paste developer or the blonde? It's a blonde. It's the one that looks like this. So it's blonde brow. And you mix it with uh, about 20 to 25 drops of oxidant cream to two centimeters. And you apply this on the brows. Sorry, it's upside down. And you let it work for three to five minutes, depending on the resistance of the gray. But all it needs is a pre-softening. That's it. Uh, then you remove it and then you can um, a tint. Uh, what is considered the bleaching case? We showed that I missed the beginning or both of my seller and selling solution include the kit. Claire, they're not including the kit. Wish they were, but they won't fit nicely into that container. So you have to buy those extra. But I did use the Reflective Soul Eye Makeup Remover, which is non-oily and it's hair strengthening. And then I did the saline solution. Uh, any patches? You mean the eye care patches that I use? Is, is that what you're asking, Claire? Uh, does anyone else want this oxidation longer after removing, make it darker? Does anyone else? Yep, it does. When when the hair dries and they go home, same with a like a lash, but when they go home after tinting, it will be a little bit darker. So just be mindful of that as well. But also a lash lift. After you done a lash lift, when the lashes dry, they'll be more lifted. But who does not want more lifted? Yeah, prefer damp to remove. Is this okay? Um, Carrie, I wouldn't make the water so damp on the cloth. Um, because we try to tell people for aftercare to avoid, like, if they're in the shower, avoid the humidity, the hot humidity, avoid your brows, uh, getting them wet. Uh, so I, I learned now to remove it dry and the effectiveness is, is good. But if you need to, uh, just damp very little water and, and, and don't sit there scrubbing the brows, just wipe them very gently. Uh, does it take color the skin at all? Very little. As you saw in her brows, it gave a shadow. But on the skin, I didn't like it if it's a little too much. Uh, so I just take it off of the with the tear remover. But it only lasts one shower. So after they shower, if you were to put on the skin, maybe just for that night, for that dinner, for that event, sure. But as soon as they go to um, take a shower, it will fade. They will be working for a new product in the new year that will have more of a staining effect. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. Um, also love the liquid like alcohol stop the oxidation process of the tint. I also thought that liquid like alcohol stop the. Um, I'm not quite sure. We don't use like, are you talking about after the saline? There's no alcohol in the saline. So it should be, it's fine to use a saline after to clean, after you're done with the timings to clean the brows. So I'm not quite sure if that's Kelly, if that was the question you asked. Do you ever do webinars on brow color matching for the tint? Or do you have, I do have one that I used a, uh, my model had red in her hair. So I did a brow lamination. I mean, I did a, uh, a webinar on bleaching and then uh, using like uh, red in the brown to color match. And that is on um, our website under recorded webinars. What is a bleaching cream? The bleaching is a tube of bleach cream inside that you mix it with the cream oxidant. Only the cream oxygen, you can mix the bleach paste. And then that's where you can bleach brows, lighten brows before a tint, or even treat those stubborn gray, uh, gray lashes. Are you able to do your own brow lamination? Will it work you, given you're upright? If you are a professional and you want to do your own, you can. Uh, it's not a retail that somebody should do it at home because if you get solutions in the eyes, it's not pleasant. Um, if you leave it long because you're just like, oh, I just want to leave it long to get an even more dramatic result, you could damage your brows. So, um, it's, it's a professional product, so if you're a professional and you want to do it yourself, sure, you can. Yeah, you can use them. We do say, though, uh, Ros Ros uh, Rosanna, we do say, no, though, to avoid makeup because sometimes people might put waterproof mascara, then you have to use an oil base to remove it. So we try to say stay, stay away from makeup. But in the holiday seasons, when you want to put, like, a uh, the brow pencil, it's fine. Uh, there's one patch included in the kit, Claire. And then after that, you have to buy the box of 10. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, here. So a box like this of 10, but in your kit only comes this, one of them. Put them in the fridge too to give a nice, uh, cool effect. Uh, do you recommend? Yep, I do. If, if your client needs, it's time for them to get a shape. And a, and a wax, like a shaping, do it at the end. It will, like uh, my model, her brows are pretty clean. I could probably just tweeze like two or three hairs right there, but that's it. But yes, you should. 
because the cleaner the brow, the, the beautiful the execution of the lamination will be. Uh, what is the after aftercare protocol? Like I said, no makeup, try to do no makeup, water, or oils for 24 within that 24 hours. Uh, consent forms, yep, you should be getting it in your thank you me email, the consent, the consent form, okay? If you don't get it, reach me out, education at cbngroup.com. I can put that slide back. So this is, I'm just going to show the, just tilter. Oops, sorry, so we can see the brows. I can just get my model to, to get up and I can put the presentation. Okay. So each hair is individualized and, and it looks now fuller darker from the color so that it, it adds uh, deafness to it as well. But that's what the results would be. You take off the eye care pads. You can use the protection cream to give a little massage at the end, like massage all this area here. Uh, that will set you apart differently from other uh, professionals, like if you offer them a nice massage at the end. Okay. And this is also good if they have some wax residue, you know, just massaging the protection cream can remove any wax residue. Okay, so you would just do all that massage, you know, your kind of like your drainage. So you would take a minute or two and that's it, right? But that's what it would be. That's what it would look. And obviously it was a webinar today, so it took much longer, but uh, usually it doesn't. So I'm going to change my, to the presentation so that I can put the slide back. But if you have any questions, and Lori, you are good. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move this out of your way. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so I can put the camera back this way and answer any final questions. Log off. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> Good napping time. <laughs> okay. Let me just remove my mask. Okay. Uh, for Botox or filler, we would say six months, but I was told by a professional, like a medical esthetician, you don't need to. So I was just going to inquire more on that because we just said to be careful, like six months. Um, oh, that way. So close. <laughs> okay. So. Let me see that question. For the consent form, please go to education at cbngroup.com to um, uh, ask for the consent form, but you should be getting a thank you email with it, okay? Uh, you should be getting a uh, recording of it, but you have to download it because within two weeks, it gets taken off the platform. Uh, we do put them on our website, but every time we have a new one, we get rid of the one and use the updated, right? Uh, so just make sure that the, you download it right away, save it somewhere so that you have it to, um, to look back. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Did you say to wait six months after Botox? Yes. That's what we were taught. But, uh, as I mentioned, a, perf um, a, a medical esthetician that can, uh, minister, like administer, uh, Botox and so forth said you don't really need to wait that long. So I was just going to have to inquest further on it, but Accutane. Yeah, six months. Because she after they've stopped using it because it's still in their system. Thank you, thank you. You would probably have Botox more than once in six months, so that wouldn't even. That's true too. That's another uh, uh, thing. If you're, they're going to get it again in six months, so it's best for them to ask their physician first and then let you know. And maybe they can even get a consent from the doctor saying it's okay, and then make the fill in the consent form. You know, the, for liability that it was approved by a physician. Okay. Yeah, her brows were um, already shaped. Um, so I didn't really have to do anything. I could have just tweezed one or two hairs. Um, all right, how long do you suggest they wait before lamination tinting service? Uh, if they just wax, it's okay. The next 24 hours, the next day is okay for them to do it if they just wax. Yeah, it's all right. Just to avoid the skin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If your doctor, if your doctor said three weeks Botox, then that's fine. If you can do a brow service or work around the eye area after a Botox and it's just three weeks, a doctor has has said that, it should be good. If you feel like you want to ask your own physician, it's always good as well. But at least for here, we, we can see that the three weeks was okay. Uh, thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Renee. Uh, the presentation, no, but you have files. Uh, brow lamination protocols. You have the step-by-step. -step. All these are getting emailed to you, okay? So you'll have adequate um, information for you to start offering the service. 
and always check our website and keep up to date with what's new, what's coming, because we will have exciting things for 2022. So please look out for that. Uh, the consent form will come to you in a thank you email. Bernadette, if you don't by any chance do see it or get it, uh, it's going to be links to uh, in your thank you email. Um, you can email me at educationcbngroup.com. You already got your kit, Isabel? Awesome. How about the new one? Isabel, were you one of the new ones? Uh, that's just getting into respect to or a brow lamination. I'm excited that you got the kit. So this is all going to help you now to execute it. Oh, perfect, Isabel. I'm happy. How many of you other ones are going to be excited now to go get the kit? Uh, share that excitement with us. Do the contest and share that excitement in a, in a comment or so forth. And always share with us your before and after pictures because uh, uh, the professionals do appreciate it when we showcase them. If they feel good, they know that their work is being approved as well. So share that with us. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, and you should wait three weeks after Botox. Yes. A correct, Kelly. You got that. No, nope, you got it. You got it. It lasts up to six weeks, or for some people, it might not. And that reaching the fourth, fifth week, they might fall down. But I wouldn't uh, suggest to keep doing it every four weeks because it's too much, especially if they're not using an aftercare. So I would suggest every six weeks. And in between, they can use a styling gel to hold the brows up or some kind of like brow gel. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, as always, for your support, too. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and come see us at the premiere show, October 17th and 18th. I don't know if you have the booth number yet, Renee, uh, but uh, we'll be at the show. So it'll be exciting to see faces to the names as well. So if there's no more questions, uh, this is the end of our webinar. We had, did have some uh, technical difficulties, so it went longer. I was so happy that I was going to keep this much shorter, but we did have some issues. Um, Thank you, Terry. We appreciate it. Booth 7276. Oh, but we might be changing it. So just watch our social media posts. We will let you know our booth number so we can have you visit us. And we will be doing two classes uh, every six weeks, Larissa. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for your time. We do appreciate your time as well. Uh, so I wish you guys all the best. And we will connect again at other webinars or in-person classes or the trade shows. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you, everyone. Bye.